Yo, yo, yo. Here we are. Let's get to it. Mark Price at devslopes.com. And what we're going to do now is create our notification system. So basically our components can listen for when there's changes made and then they can update accordingly. And there's no connection between components. The components don't care about each other. They just know when they need to update because we sent out a notification. And if you've ever done iOS development, uh, the system we're going to create is very similar to the, the iOS uh, notification center that they've implemented in their frameworks. And so we're actually going to Rather than having that pre-built for us, we're going to build our own. So this is really cool, and this is a common paradigm, uh, and you can you can use it in multiple apps if you want, in multiple languages. Uh, you just have to rewrite it in the language, but the principles are the same. So in our services, let's go to new file, and we're going to call this notification, notification service.js. And similarly, we're going to make this a singleton, and also for future reference, uh, we could probably make our HTTP service a singleton because we don't need more than one. Like if we, right now we're only accessing it in one spot, but if we have an app that has multiple components and need to access the HTTP service, we would want to make it a singleton so they can uh, access it uh, the same instance, okay? So let's create our class. We know we're going to need the instance, let instance equals null, okay? And then class is notif notification, sir, notification, sometimes I spell that word wrong, service. All right, let's create our constructor. Okay. And if there's not an instance, then ooh, the instance is going to be equal to this. And then we're going to return the instance. So our singleton is now set up. And here is the idea behind a notification uh, system or the observer pattern. What we do is we store a list of observers, okay? An observer is a class or component that says, hello, I would like to listen. And so it registers, kind of like you register to vote. I'm registering to observe. And then when it's time to be notified, I get a, I get a phone call. Or a better example is, let's say, you know, you're at the Disney hotel and, you know, Goofy comes up to you. He's like, would you like us to give you a morning wake-up call? And so you say, yes. I don't know why you'd ever do that at Disneyland and sleep in on freaking vacation. But uh, anyway, so then all of a sudden Goofy calls you at 7 a.m. You want to punch him in the face. But you you asked. You said, I want to be notified. And so it's the same exact principle. Uh, observers will register, and then the system will send back notifications when it's time to be notified. And it may be confusing right now, but you'll see it in action really soon. So there's a few principles that we need to do. One is we need to have that list of observers. So we're going to say var observers. Now, we're actually not going to make the observers an array, okay? Uh, it would be very inefficient to make it an array because we'd have to loop through every single one. In fact, in our data service, um, it's not the most efficient way to actually use a for loop here. We probably should use a dictionary and stored, or uh, an object, and stored things by their unique IDs since we know they're going to be unique, and then we wouldn't even have to loop through these. Um, but we really haven't covered that. But we're going to do it for the first time now so you can see both implementations. So we're going to make this an object where we reference things by unique ID. And the idea is that uh, an observer says, I want to register. They would say, OK, well, what do you want to register for? There's different types. So you give it a name. And then you also pass in the function that, that you would like to be um, called when it's time to register. So again, same exact thing. If you wanted a, let's say you wanted a morning wake up call, OK? You know, you say, what kind of call do you want? Do you want it to be a happy call, a, cheer, a sad call? You want me to yell at you? What's the best way to wake you up? So there's a type of phone call. Uh, you give them the number to call you back on. That's like the callback function. And then, um, of course, you, you're registering in the process. Hey, call me. So let's, let's do that now. So the first thing we probably want to do is be able to add an observer. So someone who's registering saying, hey, I want to listen. So we're going to create a function called add observer. OK, so. It's got a few parameters. It's the note of name. So what's the name of the notification you'd like to register for? Remember, this is like in the example, I want to register for a happy call or someone screaming at me because it helps me wake up better. Uh, so that's the, that's the type of call or the, the type of notification we want to listen for. The observer, that's me or that's the component that wants to listen. So we'd pass this up in here in this spot. So it, it can register the spot in memory. OK. And then the callback, that's actually a function that we're going to pass to be called. That's like our phone number in the in the phone callback case where what number do you want us to call? OK. And so what we're going to do is we are going to say let OBS equals observers notif name. So we're accessing the object by a unique key. And if it doesn't exist, we have to do something. So 
Um, let's see here. So, oh, and by the way, this is going to be an object full of arrays, okay? It's going to be an object full of arrays. So what we're doing here is we're grabbing the array, uh, and OBS is just short for objects, okay? So we're passing in the notification name, the special key to get an array out. Now, of course, we haven't, no one's observed yet. We haven't even tested this, so it's probably going to be empty. So we're going to want to check for that. So if, if this is null, okay, if this is null, it means that there's never been any observers. There's no arrays or anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to say observers, no tiff name equals an empty array. Okay, again, this is probably getting on the the more complex side of development, but you're you're there. You've made it. You made it to this portion uh, of this uh, section here, so things are getting more complex. But let me do show you an example of what this might look like with real data in it. So. This might be something like this, where uh, so where the key name might be um, wish list changed. Okay, so that's the key that we're listening for, and inside of that there might be an object where the observer is some object, some component, right? Some component, and then you know what else would there be? Uh, it would be the um, the uh, name or the callback blah, 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 callback so the callback and this would be some function okay so it's kind of probably going to look something like that and then let's say we had let's say our app was really big and we wanted to know when user has logged in so user has logged in and it would be the exact same thing okay so it's we're using oh and uh, this is an array of course because there can be multiple components that can listen for the wish list changed right so this would be observer and some other component dot 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 right so so it can ha each each item in this object is an array that has multiple objects in it storing information about that type of observer and so again the user has logged in would be its own array you know and then observer some component etc so it's going to look very similar it's going to look just like that except with real data in it and not this gobbledygook so there are is our empty observers here. And so if for this particular notification, okay, if there's no array in there, it means we've never registered for that notification before. And so all we're doing is creating an empty array at that slot for that specific notification name that was passed in here, okay? And again, you can always watch these videos over again and again if this is confusing. Let obj equals observer, observer, callback with a capital B and callback with a capital B. Okay, so all we're doing here is creating that object that I showed you up there with the observer, with the one we passed in, and the callback with the function that we passed in, okay? And then we say observers, no tiff name, dot push. Now, if we had done this dot push call without doing this here first, and it's the first time going through, we'd it would get null and our app would break or it wouldn't work. Okay, that's why we have this line of code here to initialize it as an empty array and then we push it on there. So that's how we add an observer. Okay, and I think this will start really coming together when you actually see it in action, how it's working. Okay, and we need to be able to remove an observer. So remove observer equals observer and the notif name. So what notification do we want to remove for that particular observer? So it's like you it's like you calling Disney the next day I mean like yo take me off your morning call list I don't want you to call me okay so get rid of the angry call or happy call don't don't call me again I hate goofy okay so remove observer and uh, kind of do a similar thing here so we'll grab the array of observers okay like so and then what we'll do is we'll say uh, if there are observers so don't, of course, don't go through the array if there if it's null. It means there's no observers yet. Uh, don't do anything. So if there are observers, we'll say var for x equals zero, while x is less than obs dot length x plus plus. So we're going through the list of observers here for this particular notification. We're not going through all of them. We're only going through the the notification that we care about, which is this notif name that the uh, that the component is sending up. Okay. And what are we doing? Well. If observer, uh, if if the observer observer equals obs x, 
dot observer. Okay, so remember the component is passing up itself, the object itself in memory. When you say this, when I pass in the, the word this, it's referring to that component in memory. And so multiple things can hold on to the same memory address, the same memory spot. So if I have a component that React has created and it's on my screen, okay, it exists there. But if I also store it in here, I've now got two places that are referencing or pointing to the same space in memory. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, does this observer, is it the exact same one that's in memory at this address location? And that's what this triple equals is doing. And then so obsx.observer. And if they're the same one, it means we need to remove it. Okay, so you've probably seen that triple equals before like comparing strings or numbers and you've probably also seen in the past that you can't compare objects, right? You can't compare, you know, object with its key. Is that key same to this key and this key and this key? It, it doesn't work like that. However, if you do compare the objects like this, it's actually doing a comparison to see if it's the same object in memory. Okay, and if it is, then what we want to do is get rid of it. So OBS dot splice X and one. And then observers notif name equals OBS. And all we're doing here is um, putting the array back or resetting the array back in the same slot minus, minus the one that was removed. Okay. So if it's the same one in memory, remove it and then reset the array to the new array that has that item out of it, more or less. I know it's a lot to take in. But it's cool. This is really cool stuff. If you write, if you can understand this and write code like this, uh, you'll you'll have a lot better chance of getting a job in the industry. This this is cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, yeah. So remove observer. Uh, add observer. This is looking really good. Whew. It's a lot to take in, huh? Cool. Well, I think we should call. Let's make sure this is actually working first, and then we'll call this video done. And then we'll actually try and implement it. So. Uh, to of course to to use it we got to import it right so let's go to our who needs to know if data's changed well probably our wish list there you are so import notific notification service from services slash notification dash service and if I save it, that should do the trick. Um, one problem, it's just a warning, it's not being used, that's fine. Because we're not using it, but what that means is it compiled, uh, no problem. So uh, things are looking good so far, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and call this video done and uh, let's get cracking on the good stuff. Mark Price at devslopes.com. <laughs>